Okay, I think I went to the website and I think I saw this term is called genetic sequencing. Yes. What does that mean? Well, all of us have um, in more or less every cell in our body, um, the genetic information that, that first of all is responsible for human development as an embryo and then um, for essentially carrying out all the physiological functions um, you know, in terms of day-to-day -day life. And um, that information is encoded within the nucleus of the cell in the form of the, the mm -hmm. chemical molecule DNA, which probably most people have heard of. And DNA mm -hmm. is, um, you might think of it as an exceedingly large um, sort of cookbook telling the cell how to make various proteins, which are the, um, the things that lend structure to the body and carry out various chemical reactions. Um, and so coded within the DNA is all of the information it takes um, to produce from the fertilized egg, a, a um, human infant, and then uh, it helps to control how an infant um, ultimately develops into an adult. Uh, and trying to decode that information to, to read the program um, has been the subject of um, research over the last several decades, culminating in the completion of the Human Genome Project, where the entire, um, which is really three um, billion letters of the genetic code, and everybody has two copies, one they inherit from their mother, one from their father. So we're talking all together about six billion letters of the genetic code um, that um, are part of the makeup of every person. And now the question is, yes, we can read that. That's what genome sequencing does. It reads the genetic code for a given individual. Well, the thing is that um, if you compare any two people, you're gonna find that 99.9% you know, .9 of the letters are the same. Um, mm. 0.1% may not sound like a lot, but um, when you're talking about 0.1% of 3 billion, it adds up. Um, you know, so you've got millions of million and millions of genetic differences from one person to the next. Now, most of them are not of great significance. Um, in fact, most of them probably have no medical significance. But among them, first of all, there are some that might be an explanation for why a particular individual has a, a major genetic condition. For example, sickle cell anemia would be a, a familiar one or cystic fibrosis would be another. But beyond that, we also know that there are genetic variants that by themselves don't cause disease, but they do put a person at increased risk of disease. And trying to sort out which those are, you know, what are the genetic factors that make it more likely that one person will develop high blood pressure and another person will develop diabetes and maybe somebody else will develop asthma. Now, none of these is 100% determined by genetics, but genetics plays a role. And if we can begin to dissect out what those genes are and how they work, from that, we believe, will come tools that will help us to identify people at risk, prevent disease wherever possible, and to treat it more effectively. Now, with this particular research study, we'll also be looking at also, I like how you said, treat the disease as far as like healthy habits, as far as like going forward, like if you know you're at risk of getting diabetes, you know that, okay, I shouldn't, I lay off the sugar a little bit, lay off the sweets. Right. So, um, you know, first off, I wouldn't want to create the impression that we think that, you know, genetics is the entire answer to any of these conditions. They are complex and um, always probably the outcome of combination of genetic risk factors and environmental factors, behaviors, um, you know, pretty much the entire um, life history of an individual sort of feeds into this and then out comes um, the possibility of disease. And so uh, we're not trying to suggest that the genetics are the cause of everything or the answer to everything. And in fact, the All of Us program is collecting information on environmental history and um, based on surveys, personal habits and things of that kind. So um, it's really a complex equation and we're trying as best possible to capture 
as much as possible um, to integrate all of that into the study. So um, genetics is a big part of it, but by no means the only part of it. And when you do identify an individual at risk, obviously the next question is, so what can you do about it? And that varies greatly depending on what the condition is. Um, there are instances where there might be medications that would be prescribed and you would customize both the choice of medicine and the dosage to the way that person interacts with medications, first of all. Secondly, there could be medical surveillance done. You know somebody is at risk of cancer now and you would be watching them closely um, with appropriate techniques to try to detect it as quickly as possible, as early as possible, so that the treatment outcomes are better. Uh, but indeed, you know, some of the things that might come of this is to realize that a particular person needs to pay attention to their diet, to patterns of exercise and things of that kind. Now, we really, we'd probably argue everybody should be paying attention to diet and exercise. And, and that is, I'm, I'm sure, true, but it can be motivational to realize that you're at risk greater than somebody else of developing diabetes and you can make a difference to that risk and avoid some of the really um, serious outcomes. And although, you know, it's, it's easier said than done, I'm sure for people to change their diet or their lifestyle, um, we do hope that if we identify people whose risk is greater, uh, that they'll at least factor that into their thinking as they um, decide how to respond. Android, iPhone, and iPad for free. Get info on everything you need to know about local news, events, businesses, restaurants, and more. Visit our website, whatshappeningbham.com, or follow us on social media at Happening Beham for more information. Download the What's Happening Birmingham app today, your source for everything Birmingham.